Women getting the sleep and rest they deserve is maybe one of the most important things they can do to decenter men. So bear with me, we're going to go on a ride here. I have been realizing more and more with the work that I do. One of the most important things that I try to do with my work is not only point out like things that are wrong and how to like and deconstructing stuff, but it's also to give hope and also like actions that that we can take instead of just being like, oh my God, everything sucks. This is a nightmare. And so one of the things that I want anyone who follows me um, and, and my work to focus on, um, if you're not already, maybe you are, is sleep. And this, I can't express how important this is because sleep deprivation is one of the ways that men control us. Sometimes, and this is one of the favorite tactics of narcissists and abusers and all that stuff, but it's also one of the things that men do just out of selfishness. They ruin our sleep. And so I want to challenge women who I'm not, I don't want everyone to be in here like, you know what, you know, you should just divorce, blah, because that's not even an option for a lot of women, especially if they have been trapped financially and cannot leave. And so I know that this advice is actually not even applicable to a lot of women because a lot of women are with men who literally like, they can't even do this. But I just want to give some, some tips on how, if you are in a relationship and, and you can do this, I never, you will never convince me that we can ever change men. And it's actually not our job. And that's part of the problem is that society has convinced women that changing men is our number one goal. And I'm done. I am done. And I don't even think most men are going to listen to me anyway. And they're not going to change. But what I can do is share with you the ways that I have decent, been, de been decentering men and will continue to the rest of my, probably to like die because this thing is so deep. But what I have noticed is that in my relationships, the more I heal, the relationships, they can't stay the same as long as it, if I am changing. Like it's impossible. If you're dancing together and you start doing things, moves differently, like you just, it, 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 the, the relationship dynamic will change if that other person never changes. It has to change just by you changing alone. And then what information you notice, the more women prioritize their sleep and their rest instead of men's, being men's peace, being the literal battery that they charge themselves with every night. God, I have so much to say about that. It's for women to start centering themselves. And if the men you're with resist this and make this hard for you, then you may have more information about what you need to do for self-preservation. But sometimes the men actually, you know what? They don't resist that change. But, it, it, what it, but it's on us to make the changes in our lives as much as we can um, instead of just going along with this crap like we've been taught to do. And also, stop listening to advice that is like archaic, like don't go to bed angry. Fork that noise. My best friend Liz, she is now actually um, a marriage and uh, family therapist. But she said this long ago that she realized that that advice is the worst advice ever and that it is, I've actually realized more with the feminist lens that that, is, that advice is so that women don't sleep as much. And I'm going to get into that a little later on. Go to bed at anger. Prioritize your sleep over repairing anything in the relationship, please. Because I promise you one thing, most men will always prioritize their sleep over you. Or like they just want to prioritize everything themselves over you. But we need to actually act more like men because we already are trained to be super thoughtful. Not, uh, not all of us, okay? But we are already trained to be like a codependent and obsessed with how everyone else is doing to our own detriment. So we're like, that's gonna, we're never just gonna be like, oh my God, I hate all you, I'm that. We're never just gonna, like, we need to start being a little bit more like men and men need to start being a little bit more like us, thoughtful aware of your impact on people, all the crap that we are overdoing to our own detriment. And we are dying. We are dying from this. So let's get into it. I swear the way he sleeps. Look at that. He just hangs his head off. Anyway, oh, this is a whole video in and of itself. But married men are healthier than everyone else. And here's why. One of the reasons why is because their health is prioritized over their wives. Their wives will make sure their husbands get sleep, Go to the doctor, do all the things, eat well, all the crap. But the men will never, not never. Most men will not do that for their wives. And so wives, so a lot of women who marry men sacrifice 
so many important things, their career, their bodies, la la la, and especially their health and their sleep is at the root of a lot of that. So just in case you didn't know this, men sleep better besides a mate. Women sleep worse. This has been written about plenty, maybe not enough though. And you know, this article in the New York Times a while back, uh, it talks, it tries to talk about maybe normalizing couples sleeping apart. Like I love you, but I don't want to sleep <laughs> with you. It really missed a lot of important things. So I'm going to talk about those things. They interviewed in this article a woman who was like, is there something wrong with me for like wanting to prioritize my sleep? He talks about how a lot of couples see not sleeping in the same room as a sign of trouble. And then they also included all this crap by like schmegs and marriage counselors who saying, well, it's a, it's a pink flag. It's a sign that your marriage might be ending. Do you know what? It may be a sign that the marriage is ending, but a lot of times it's because a lot of women are so sick of sacrificing for men that they're like, you know what? I'm not sacrificing this anymore. I'm sleeping in another room, you know? And that's sometimes the only way that they can justify um, making that decision to prioritize their self, their sleep, and even like not having to have like coercive schmecks from their partners, which is great. Like this one woman was like, few metaphors convey a relationship on the rocks than a couple sleeping apart. You know what? Stop. And every time I even talk about this, my comments are full of women who are like, no, 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 no. A sleep divorce literally saved our marriage. It kept us from divorcing. So I want to talk about this because there's this can apply to so many women. This is uh, women who are in you know healthy marriages, women that are not so healthy marriages, women who are single and hooking up with men. I actually wrote about this. Glamour Magazine back when I was single when how I realized that um, I don't want these men staying over after we hook up. Get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> You're going to ruin my sleep. And like, just because we had Schmegs, like, because we're like Schmegs friends, doesn't mean that like you get to charge your battery by being next to me all night. Because that's what a lot of these men are doing. And they ruin our sleeps, so whether we're married to them, dating them, or just having a fun hookup. Prioritize your sleep over these men's feelings or whatever because I guarantee you that's what they're doing all the time these therapists also were like it takes away the guaranteed time together not to mention easy opportunities for schmeg yeah but you know what a lot of these women don't want that anymore a lot of men are like trying to hook up with them while they're asleep because they're you know which is weird and um you know oftentimes grape actually this was the very first article I wrote about uh for glamour magazine years ago was when Suzanne Summers went on there being like, ha ha, yeah, he forks me in the middle of the night all the time. I never remember any of it. That is spousal grape. I don't care how much you love to cuddle. It is not worth losing a whole night's sleep. And honestly, you only cuddle for like a little bit. Then it's like, get away from me. I want to sleep. <laughs> One doctor was trying to blame not uh, having sh not sleeping together. Look at this crap. Please don't fall for this crap. Take away the snuggle time and that happens in a shared bed. And the same... The, the Schmegs might go soon too. Watch out. When you sleep in the same bed, Schmegs naturally happens, she said. We marry for love and therefore we want to be in the same bed and have Schmegs with each other. And basically tries to use this like statistic, the 33 to 40% report there in um, Schmegs lift relationship, which is defined as having Schmegs no more than six times a year. I need women to stop worrying about how many times you're having it. Like this is usually like focused on men. Men are the ones who are obsessed with how much, and, I, and actually, this is another video. Like, all of this is like, this drives me mad because in my experience, in terms of like some lived experiences and the experiences of most women I know who are in healthy relationships, um, you know, it's usually only, not only, but a lot of times the unhealthy relationships with men who are not working on themselves, they're the ones where the men are like, why are we doing it enough? Because a lot of times the healthy relationship, because of, you know, uh, a lot of women in their 40s and like mid 30s and stuff like actually are like I felt like a teenager I wanted it all the time and usually it's women who hate their husbands that are the ones who are like not working them because their husbands have abandoned them in every way possible but are still married to them and then those husbands are like we have a smash this marriage so whatever I, I don't care I don't care anymore but how many times you're having it stop using that to coerce yourself or gaslight yourself sorry, into letting these men coerce you into giving it something that you do not owe them. God! Okay, I need to do another video on that, clearly. Because look, 31% of surveyed couples who said that they sleep apart report be part of that the arrangement has no impact on their, on their relationship. And 21% said that it improved their relationship. Now let's get into exactly why men are desperate to sleep with 
I'm going to provide a lot of examples and science and statistics to make this point because this point cannot be emphasized enough. So this article, they start off with this woman named Lori Taylor. So she would love to sleep next to her husband if his snoring and thrashing weren't guaranteed to keep her awake all night. And so this woman was still struggling with the, the idea of not sleeping next to her husband. But given that she's 48, I really hope that she is decided to do it and also well I'm gonna get to this in a second because um this is like menopause or perimenopause age here and a lot of women's sleep really suffers during this time and we need it more than ever okay I want to show an example of the way that women gaslight are there's there's something nice about the warmth of a human body next to you even if you're not sleeping <laughs> as well as somebody who slept alone for most of my adult life with the exception of a couple like short, short relationships, I have slept in a bed by myself for most of my life, especially most of my adult life until I married my husband or, you know, until we started dating. And I sleep like a baby next to this man. Okay. But I promise you, like I, you know, if I travel or sleep in a bed by myself, like I'm totally <laughs> sleeping next to a warm body. I'm sorry, but like we really need to stop thinking this is like amazing thing. Because unless this man loves the crap out of you and makes you feel really safe and also doesn't have sleep apnea, and if he does have sleep apnea, is actually dealing with it so he doesn't literally take years off of your life, no warm body is as good, is as, is as important as being rested. I don't, why are we, like, and I want to just also make, like, this note, like, most married people will tell you, or just most people in long-term relationships, I'm sorry, but, like, nobody cuddles all night. If I was with a partner who wanted to cuddle me all night, I'd be like, get off me. It is not, like, God, I hate how they've normalized this in movies, honestly. Nobody sleeps like that, like that all night. It's not even healthy, usually. I'm sure there's exceptions, okay? So if you're one of these people like, no, I love it, that's fine. Please don't derail the argument. When you're in a bed together, you're in a little private space on your own time. Cuddling up on the couch will, will you know, with the phone ringing isn't the same. Okay. Oh, God, there's so much to unpack here. But her trouble getting a good night's rest next to her husband is it's not unusual women sleep less soundly when they share a bed with a romantic partner um that's what a study published in sleeping biology rhythms found surprisingly here we go men actually sleep better when they sleep next to a woman this is why i call men soul digger they're also energy diggers they're energy vampires and i'm telling you just having these men next to you sucks the life force out of you if they are toxic men especially if they're not toxic and you feel safe with them that's the other thing if these men oh that's okay i'm gonna get to this later but in general if these men are not really like, don't if you don't feel super safe with them and, and if they are weaponizing their moods against you and all that stuff you are not sleeping soundly next to this man already so this one person was like there's a lot of couples sleeping separately more than you would think are uh, 20, uh, an estimated 20, so there's different studies with different statistics, but, up, you know, 23% of American couples say they're doing it. And in Canada, the study said up to 34% are. I would argue it's more than this, honestly. Women are more, are more, have a tougher time sharing a bed because men are much more likely to be snores. And often it's the woman who has to move to a different bed or room in some cases when the decibel level of her husband's snoring, uh, <laughs> crescendos to an intolerable level. Okay, this is what I also want women to do. Stop doing this. Why do you have to go sleep on the couch? On an uncomfortable couch? Also, I want to acknowledge that there is so much privilege around the idea of actually sleeping in another bedroom because most people, especially in big cities, and especially unless you make a ton of money, you don't have just an extra bedroom. Okay, so I just want to acknowledge that a lot of people don't even have a separate place to go sleep, a couch to go sleep on, okay? But this couple does have a couch. But why is she going? He's the one causing all the problems. You're going to get madder the more I read this. Okay, this is so weird. But snoring may not, may not be the only problem for women who like to spoon all through the night. What woman likes to do that? Can, tell me. Tell me in the comments. Are you a woman who wants to be spooned all night by a man who probably doesn't wash his butt? Who probably is snoring in your ear? Who may have, you know, you may have a big old erection in your back. A man with, like, men are so hairy and a lot of them. God, I don't want some man, like, hello. Maybe it's just me, but I do not want a man uh, uh, spooning with me all night. You know, the only time I ever liked that was when I was like, well, when I was single and sometimes I'd hook up with a man and he was like a really good cuddler. Then I was like, this is nice. 
for one night. Not every night. So they had some of these devices that measured how much these men impact their wives or the snore impacts. By the way, I know that a lot of times the woman is the snore in a relationship. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But please do not derail this video by being like, well, my wife's the one who's the snore. Shut up. I know. But it is actually statistically more often than not men. And as we're going to see, it's men who refuse to do anything about it because they're so selfish. And some of them literally are trying to unalive their wives through their sleep. By the way, so I swear every time I do this stuff, men are like, yeah, but my wife, shut up. I don't care. I'm not talking to you. Get out of my comments. So they did these like acti graphs or whatever. They showed that women's sleep was more fragmented on nights when they shared a bed. Shocker. Then when, then when they slept alone. The differences weren't huge, but they were significant. It also says, by the way, they were only tracking people between the ages of 21 and 31. I don't care about this age group. I care about women, people, like, especially women this age. But the reason why this isn't as important to me, because men age, men snore more as they age. So these people are not dealing with men snoring as much as someone, as a woman who has married to a man in his 40s, 50s, 60s, and above. This is another case for stop dating and marrying old men. They do not bring value to your life. They are going to make your life harder. Do not date old men. I hate that we've been conditioned to date old men. Seriously, don't, don't do it. So then they say research, researchers speculate that women's fretful sleep might be caused by brain wiring differences between men and women. Okay. Women tend to be lighter sleepers because they historically have been the ones caring for infants and research as researchers. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I know that, but I actually want to mention something that I haven't, in all the research that I'm about to show you, one thing that I did not see I don't care about biological wiring. So many women have sleep trauma from growing up in homes where their fathers, stepfathers, brothers, grandpas, uncles, some man in their house, because men are the most dangerous people in a woman's life, the, women, the men in their homes. Statistically, it's not the boogeyman. It's literally the men that love you. So many women have uh, issues with childhood essay um, and, you know, an inch messed and all kinds of things that already make them, their sleep messed up. So much sleep trauma. And if they don't have that from their childhood, they have it from, I don't know, passing out maybe in college or as a teenager or sometime in their life and then crawling into bed. I've, I could literally make a whole video on all the men who have crawled into bed with me while I was asleep to try to do some stuff. God, well, I'm sorry. It's not just like biological life from taking care of babies, although that is part of it because men won't get up and take care of their own children and just make it sure that mom is the one because she's breastfeeding, whatever excuse they have that's lame. But it's this. It is women never being most vulnerable at any time of the day. The most vulnerable a woman is is when she's asleep. And if you grew up in a home or went to go visit grandpa or whatever, and you have in your history men violating you as a child, teenager, or adult while you're sleeping, I'm sorry, we're already not good. We're more restless sleepers because we have so much trauma around this. And then if we're partnered with a man who weaponizes his mood or whatever and we don't feel safe with, well, guess what? We're not going to sleep too well. So I wish they would bring that into their stupid studies, but I haven't seen any yet. God, I'm riled up, but mm. every time I do sleep videos, you would not believe the comment section. So much women have trauma around sleep because not just because of men, but oh, oh because of a lot of men. And so here they also noticed that this study would have been more accurate if they'd taken an older sampler because men's snoring gets worse with age. Now look at this. Psychologist Wendy Troxell, I don't know if I say, isn't surprised when she sees all this. Look at this. This is super important. Studies have shown that men are very dependent on close relationships. I feel so vindicated. It's men who want, oh God, contrary to popular stereotypes. She's done a lot of study on this. She studied the quality of relationships, how it affects the overall health and sleep in men and women. Oh, this woman knows she's talking about. She's been studying this for a while. In general, men show much clearer benefits from committed relationships. My research shows that married men are much more happier and healthier than unmarried men. We already knew that. The findings are much less consistent with women. So research has shown that a good night's sleep is so important for daytime functioning. 
So literally, like, wanting to cuddle is literally going to ruin your entire day. But, uh, like, we don't think of it. We're like, yeah, but you know, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Stop! Hurt his feelings. Test that little fragile ego of King Baby. I'm so mad at this researcher here. <sighs> They're like, at the end of the day, there's something essentially comforting about this behavior of, like, sleeping with, next to someone. So much so that people are sometimes willing to sac sacrifice perfect sleep to get it. It's not sacrificing perfect sleep. It's literally sacrificing sleep. Uh, no one gets perfect sleep. I'd be hard-pressed to imagine uh, recommending with a cheerful heart for people to sleep apart. Fork you. Because look at this. Perils and other experts suggest that couples looking for solutions to snoring and other sleep problems before turning to separate beds. I recommend earplugs or whatever it takes. For who? That's what I'm asking. For who? Whatever it takes for who? Because why do women have to sleep with earplugs and do all this crap to protect themselves from, the, from sharing a bed with men? And by the way, this should be a whole separate video. It's not just they're snoring. Men are literally... <sighs> Have you ever, like, I want any woman who's married to, or any, any, any woman who's partnered with a man, a military vet, especially one who ever was in active combat, tell me how terrifying that is. It is literally dangerous. Women die because men wake up thinking that you're like their attacker, and, ah! right? And w I made a video on this last summer, and the comment section was terrifying how many win women have woken up with black eyes and literally almost died sleeping next to these men who won't treat their PTSD. I'm telling you, man, like share separate bedrooms could literally save your life. You're sleeping next to a bear a lot of times. And they're like, I don't know. I'd be hard pressed to tell women to sleep in a separate. Just do everything you can. Meanwhile, the men do nothing. And I'm going to show you right now. Because the woman from the beginning who was you know, in her late forties being like, I don't know, earplugs have helped her and her husband sleep through the night on vacations so when the couple needed to share a bed, but she, they didn't help enough to make a, a, a shared bed work at home. And why? I'd like him to get a sleep study, but so far he's been unwilling to do that. This right here is what's killing women. Selfish, selfish, selfish men don't care that they are literally killing you they're killing you through your i'm going to get into this all the, the things that impact your life because i don't want to get a suit specialist i don't want to wear this stupid thing and i don't feel like a man have to wear that why don't you go sleep on the couch or you put earplugs on and all kinds of crap i will do literally nothing even though men die Y'all, men, men are like okay <sighs> they literally like men we already know that men when their wives die the lazy, entitled, selfish men are like, all right, well, I give up. And they literally die, not because they love their wives so much, because they would literally rather die than have to do anything for their own health. I'm telling y'all, patriarchy harms men too. Never nearly as much as it harms women. The same way, way white supremacy culture harms white people too, but never even a percentage to the people that our violence literally kills. But men like, m m God, I swear to God, we care more about men than they care about themselves. This is why the women who, like, who hate feminism, fork off, bro. I care about you more than you care about you. Isn't that sad? And yet you hate me. So there's a lot of things I read about up on this. How sleep uh, is different for men and women. Historically, sleep research has been focused disproportionately on males. Shocker. Like literally everything, which is why we die in cars more and die of everything more and get too much high doses of medication because literally nothing is considered when y'all do research on anyone but white men. And so the difference is really, we don't even know because they care so little about us. They even like, I, and I did this video about this article a while ago. Even the New York Times, like, I need y'all to get on board with, like, looking deep. Why do women have more sleep issues than men? I swear, they're still, like, blaming it on us instead of men traumatizing us and men being selfish. Honestly, that's, a, I, I can summarize it there. I'll put it on a t-shirt. Women's sleep is because men are entitled and selfish and traumatize us. Period. That's it. And none of them will write about this. Oh, it's caring for a newborn. Caring for a newborn. Of course. But why are the women caring for a newborn? What's dad doing? Sleeping. Remember I did that video on that old game called Don't Wake Daddy? We have been taught to prioritize men's sleep since we were born. Fork men's sleep. Or 
fuck it. I don't care about their sleep anymore. I care about mine because I probably already lost years of my life because of men disturbing my sleep. No, but it's because women's brains are trying to hear the baby. Sure. But it's because of men. And it's because of pattern of hypervigilance responses. Hypervigilant. Okay, sure, about the baby. Maybe we're hypervigilant because so many of us have been traumatized by men in our sleep. Like, God, y'all are so close. You're so close to the point. But you, oh. How do you get better sleep? I swear, it all comes down to like women need to lose weight. <laughs> we're so fat phobic in this society. Every time they're like, you're not sleeping? Maybe it, may, it couldn't possibly be your partner. Women need to lose weight. <laughs> or it's hormones or it's like conditioning, uh, brain wiring because the baby this, baby that. Bleh. Yeah, hormones do affect our sleep. And that's why we need more of it. But I'm telling you, men and all their trauma and refusal to care about us is behind most of it. You will never convince me differently. Let's look about what factors that contribute to snoring, which is one of the main problems that women have because their partners don't s treat their snoring. Well, uh, snoring is caused by alcohol and other sedatives. Overweight people tend to snore. Okay, again, they always want to blame it on weight. I'm not saying that's not part of it, but I swear doctors are literally, when they go to medical school, especially when it comes to women, Every problem is about, oh, maybe she's pregnant or it's because she's overweight. <laughs> I swear to God. Blah, blah, blah. All this. All this might be part of it. Blah, blah, blah. Smokers are more likely to snore. And then this. Men are more likely than women to snore due to different muscle structure in the neck and throat as well as hormonal factors. Et voila. Et voila, as they say in France. Men snore more. Sorry, it's true. And they snore more with age, which I'm going to get into now. Now, what could they do? What could men do who snore to maybe deal with this? Oh, I don't know. They could avoid alcohol and heavy foods before bedtime. They could quit smoking. They could sleep on their side, blow their nose before, but they could get the, go get sleep apnea tests. But no, it's always what, what can women do to bend ourselves into a pretzel around men? What can we do to sleep better next to selfish men who won't do any of this, right? Interesting statistic. Snoring is the third leading cause of divorce in the U.S. behind infidelity and financial issues. I really wish they would just go one step further. One step further and be like, well, and snoring, i.e. men being selfish and refusing to do anything to accommodate or care for or be thoughtful of their wives is the number three reason. And then I would argue that number one and, number one and number two are tied into that too. Men's selfishness is what's behind most divorces. Okay? Like, et voila! Snoring is often considered a sign of selfishness when no attempt is made by the snorer to address the issue. See, they, they, every once in a while you can find somebody talking about it. But in the major news article outlets, they will not, I have not seen them just be like, selfishness, that's what the divorce crisis is about. The lonely male crisis, selfishness. That's, that's, that's literally what it comes down to. Look at this, secondhand snoring. If your bed partner snores, you, you know, you're going to suffer from secondhand snoring. You might be losing two hours of sleep per night. That solves the mystery of why you're so tired, even though you got seven or eight hours of sleep. The good news is, is that when the snore is effectively, effectively treated, the bed partner typically sees a 20% improvement in their own sleeping scores. Snorers are often unaware of how much their snoring affects you and them. It's often up to the person experiencing secondhand snoring to take action. Of course it is. Of course it is, because it's up to women to solve all of men's problems. But this is why I want women especially if you actually love your husband and don't and feel like he's a good partner and he's doing this stuff, I need you to bring this up. Because like I'm saying, and I'm going to get into just how malicious men are with this in a bit, but I really need women to understand that even like not bringing this up and biting your tongue is killing you. I don't care about these men's feelings. I don't care about their discomfort anymore with knowing that, uh-oh, <laughs> he snores a lot. Tell them they are killing you. Tell them that. And then their reaction will tell you everything. Literally, show them this video or show them, well, <laughs> a lot of men can't handle my stuff yet. Show them these articles. You might think, I'm not the one uh, who's breathing in 
uh, suffering? How can my health be impacted? But the truth is that breathing is only part of it. It's related to sleep. Yeah, okay, your partner's not sleeping well or not breathing well, but you are the one usually losing sleep, not them. In fact, a study of people with sleep apnea showed that the people experiencing secondhand snoring woke up almost as much as the person with the breathing problem. Ugh. When sleep apnea uh, sufferers woke up an average of 20 time, 28, 6 times an hour, the partner actually woke up an average of 21 times. So even if you do not have sleep apnea, you kind of do. You kind of have it now because of them and their refusal to deal with it. Look at this. The re results of a, this, of a study show that people with, who are experiencing secondhand, right, partners who snore regularly experience anxiety, depression, and health effects. They experience a reduced quality of life compared to the people who sleep with non-snorers. There are endless Reddits about this. My husband snores and he refuses to do anything about this. This is why divorce is, uh, this is the number one three cause of divorce. I, gar I dare you to Google husband snoring Reddit. You'll be there for hours. This woman talks about how, <laughs> and I, I promise you there are so many, uh, let me know in the comments if this was your experience because this is so common. This woman was married for 27 years, but about 10 years ago, because this gets worse with age, for men, his snoring became intolerable. So they did some tests and he got diagnosed with sleep apnea. They told him he could st stop breathing and die if he didn't get a CPAP machine. Like literally, this is not just like, like, the, like not, the sleep apnea could kill these people. And every time I do a video on this, people are like, oh yeah, I know a man who died at 45 because he didn't get treated. <sighs> he refuses to get one though, because he doesn't like the way it feels at night. I would argue it's not just that, it's usually because he feels emasculated. Because of his selfishness, I've started to sleep in the den. Because I can't sleep through the night when we're in the same room. It's so disturbing. <laughs> Our neighbors have told us they can hear it in the summer months when the windows are open. He still won't budge. He says if he dies, he dies. Oh my God. Okay, not only is like... This, th this goes into... So one of my mutuals, Candace Kelly, journalist, who's done so much great work, and I talk about her a lot. She's the one who came up with the hospice wives term. This right here, if I die, I die. Oh, really? What kind of, what? If you have a stroke or a heart attack because of sleep apnea, and then you are, I don't know, disabled or have some sort of problem, like literally men refusing to take care of themselves, not only is literally taking years off of this woman's life, she's sleeping in the den, but he, it is setting her up to be a hospice wife. God, this is why men literally, the least they can do if they are feminist is take care of themselves because their refusal to take care of themselves, literally, we suffer all the consequences of them refusing to take care of themselves and their recklessness and their addictions and their escapism and all the decisions they make always impact women, their wives, girlfriends, sisters, daughters. How many daughters become hospice daughters? Um, and even mothers, they will literally be in their 50s and 60s and then go live with their elderly mom and make her deal with, like, God, they're so, ugh. they are so self-hating and we can't fix that. But what we can do is protect ourselves from their self-hatred, ruining our lives and killing us. She's like, I miss sleeping with my husband even more than that. I miss feeling like he cares. I'm so frustrated by that. Why do you miss sleeping with this man who hates you? He hates you. He hates himself. Therefore, he hates you. So there's a lot of studies out for optimum health and function. The average adult should get seven to nine hours of sleep. Every night. But more than 60% of women regularly fall short of that goal. I wonder why. All the things I've been talking about. This may be due. No. This may be due to insomnia. And that, shut up. That's not what this is about. This is literally because men torture us with their, like, with all the stuff I've been talking about. God. Like, I can't believe. <sighs> they will literally blame it on anything other than the men in our homes. So do women actually need more sleep than men? They kind of care now. They talk about how uh, research suggests that women tend to sleep just a little bit longer than men, but sleep works best when it's uninterrupted. Even if women are sleeping enough, if it's interrupted by selfish husbands, then it's still like they're not going to be rested. 
Women are 40% more likely to have insomnia than men. Women are also twice as likely to be diagnosed with anxiety and depression. <sighs> Why do you think they're anxious and depressed? They, they literally get so close to the point, but then won't go a little bit farther. They do talk about hormones. And again, I'm not saying that hormones are, hormones are a very big part of why women need more sleep because we're already screwed because of all this baby crap. Like, I know that I'm going to suffer from all this menopause crap, even though I never had, I don't, I, I mean, it's not, well, like, I don't need a uterus. I didn't want kids. I'm never having kids, but like, whether you had kids or not. Anyone with uteruses is going to be affected. Our sleep is going to get forked. And then we have on top of this men. Ma oh, look, my dog. <laughs> look. <laughs> we have men who don't care if you are date men. Menstruation. A third of all people have trouble sleeping because of menstruation. So literally, as soon as you start menstruating, you're forked. And then pregnancy. All this means you don't get much sleep. And then menopause too. Like, God, is there ever like... When are we free? When we're like 60 something? Oh, but then we're dealing with old men who are snoring. Great. So they say that they, they acknowledge that there's a gender based differences uh, that can affect sleep. Researchers have done documented differences about the amount of time women and men dictated by paid and unpaid labor, right? Work and social responsibilities and, fair, and family caregiving. So again, another reason women aren't getting as much sleep is because men come home from work and play video games and drink and watch TV and women just let, literally never get to stop working. Men are, women are more likely than men to wake up to take care of others. Exactly. Not just babies either. Do not let these men move their parents into your house. God, I should make, I, do, I need to do research and make a video on that. Do not take care of his parents. Please, God, do not take care of his parents. Because you're going to be the one waking up doing all the work. And he gets all the credit of being a good son when he's not going to do anything. So basically all the studies suggest that women have a greater need for sleep. And studies ex exploring sleep differences from non-binary and transgender people are limited. So um, again, there's not a whole lot of research out there. So I can't even cover that in these studies. But I just want to acknowledge um, the language that I'm using and how um, this is... <sighs> There's, there's so many intersections mi like that are mi missing in this research. Regardless of gender, most adults do not get enough sleep each night. Around one-third of adults sleep less than seven hours per night on a regular basis. Women, according to this line of thought, tend to engage in less risk-taking behaviors than men. You know, I, that's like my wheelhouse right there. And are more likely to attend to their health. So again, like men will... St okay, if men are not getting enough sleep... Maybe it's because they just work so hard and they're such a good partner and they la 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 la. But a lot of times it's because they're staying up all night playing video games and do, drinking and doing self-destructive behavior. So their little lack of sleep a lot of times is their own making. Whereas women's lack of sleep is because we're doing too much and have selfish partners who won't deal with their bad health and their snoring. For example, women might be more likely to make time for sleep. And make them, you know, and make themselves go to bed um, and with an earlier bedtime or set aside time for a nap. Okay, so this is really enlightening. This was a man talking about how he w realized that um, he needed to deal with his sleep stuff to save his marriage. This is really enlightening because it says so much. I like the fact this man is like brutally honest. Uh, but... <laughs> He's still not quite there, but I do appreciate men who are trying to be like, hey, bros, we're like super selfish. When he went to go get a sleep study, the first thing, when they're like, why are you here? He's like to save my marriage. And then he talks about how, and I love that this woman kicked him out of the room. Okay, stop sleeping on in, a, in the closet or on the couch or another room when he's the problem. My story means that my cat is more likely to seem, sleep in the same bed as my wife. Even my teenage daughters and her teddy bears are more likely to be able to sleep in the bed than me. But look at this. And this was so this is in the UK. So I'm not just talking about the US, although most of my studies are from the US. I am one of 15 million snores in the UK. That's 41.5% of adult of the adult population. Now, also notice that usually around 50-ish percent of the adult population is men. Of the, uh, I'm one of the 25% of those 15 million who snore regularly and disturb their partners. Then he says that it is actually pretty unlikely that a lot of these snores are sleeping on the sofa bed like he is. And that many don't even have that luxury or that option. But I like that he pointed this out. More likely, millions of non-snores, most of them women, are suffering silently. 
There they lie, red-eyed and resentful, while their snoring partner registers themselves on the Richter scale. So he also backs this up with research. Men are more likely to snore or have sleep apnea than women. This is because men have a larger space in the back of their throats as they tend to have larger airway. And so when they relax, the tongue falls back and fills this space. Moreover, males tend to have a higher proportion of fat around their neck in the soft palate in the upper part of their tongue. Whereas when women tend to have a greater fat de, uh, de, 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 oh God, deposition in the lower part of their airway. This is likely detected by the levels of testosterone. Studies have shown that females with overprotective, let's call them women, okay? You sound like a red pill dude. Uh, with overproduction of male hormones are four times more likely to snore. Okay, so I don't know how much of that is research-based, but it is interesting. Again, it further proves why men snore more. But it's not just my sex that matters when it comes to snoring. My wife has noticed that my snoring has gotten louder in recent years. So again, this is also true. As we age, our tongue and throat muscles begin to relax and weaken. La 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 la. Basically, it's saying like it's going to get worse with time. This is why older men have a reputation of snoring so loud. Okay. So I'm not going to go into the, all, all of this. Then he like talks about all the things he did to avoid getting the sleep test. And I'm like, bro, just get the test done. Like, come on. And then he talks about his father, who apparently was such a bad snorer that one time he woke up on a train <laughs> and the passengers were cowering at the other end of the p compartment because of the incredible racket he was making. Look at this. I, this, is, I, uh, this is a little detour, but I want you to understand that a lot of our grandmas were literally at war with their husbands. They were being held hostage. Some of them just kind of like accepted their fate and other ones either tried to like fight back or just like tried to torture them back. My grandma actually did that. I am, I, I love that women were like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. One night while he snored in the armchair, my mother, furious at the noise, crept behind him with a pair of scissors. <laughs> she cut off his baby Charlton comb over or whatever. Um, this thing was like 12 inches, had been known to flap unbecomingly in the middle of the breeze. He was furious. But to be fair, my mother said, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> See, um, a lot of men are like, I want a trad wife. And actually, uh, there's a woman on TikTok that talks about, she all she does is go over all the times that women were trying to unalive their husbands because they were trapped and these men were literally torturing them. <laughs> Y'all promise y'all do not want to go back to these days because our grandmas, most of them actually were resisting and literally trying to poison y'all or like sleeping with a neighbor like my grandma or like just doing anything to survive and also like fight back because you would like, oh, my dad's snoring was probably uh, accompanied by twitching because his is. And this is another thing that we don't talk about. Snoring and sleep them because periodic limb movement during their sleep, which is involuntary tw twitching of the lower eggs, legs and ankles. So not only are these men like waking you up in their noise, they're also a lot of times kicking you and like, bah, like it's so much chaos, y'all. So uh, why my wife wonders don't snores wake themselves up? Why do they wake everybody else up but themselves? Is it because they're selfish? Well, yeah, that's part of it. But here, people do wake up from particular loud snores, but this will only for, be for a brief moment, usually before they go back to sleep. Whereas a lot of times, especially women, because of our hypervigilance while sleeping, not just because of babies, but because of so much trauma, we wake up and now we can't go back to sleep. Whereas they're like, <gasps> God. Okay, the whole rest of the article is just like him trying to avoid having to deal with it. And then he kind of deals with it and he does all these things to deal with it because apparently he doesn't have sleep apnea, but he has some other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But the thing that really gets me is he's just so obsessed about not being able to sleep in the same bed with his wife. And that is what, she is perfectly happy not sleeping in the bed with him. She's living her best life up in that bedroom. And he is doing all this to try to be able to sleep in the bed with his wife because men need our energy is something about being next to us that literally makes them sleep better you will not convince me otherwise i mean remember when i did that the whole series of videos on tori spelling and dean god that man literally admitted that she is like a battery that like it's like plugging in his iphone and charging it all night i was like oh, he said it out loud i'm telling you they need us but they're killing us we don't need them. We actually sleep better without them most of the time, unless they're actively working on this crap. And 
Most importantly, if we feel safe with them. Apparently, this is such a big thing that they have all these articles about how to prevent a sleep divorce. And that doesn't mean a, a divorce from the snoring. It's literally like couples who, like, this is a thing now. Women are realizing, like, I need my sleep. So we got to sleep separately. I would actually take this farther and maybe I do a separate video on this. I want women to also be open to the idea of just out of the gate having your own room, regardless of sleep issues. I promise you, a lot of times your Schmeg's life will actually be better because it's more intentional and it's not just on the whims of this man, right? Like you will never convince me that couples are going to have schmegs less by sleeping in separate bedrooms because I'm telling you a lot of times those couples are having schmegs. It's not because both of them want to be. And by both, I usually mean her not wanting to, but because she's easy access and just, you know, goes and we've been so conditioned to this conjugal duty crap. Or men do it to us while we're sleepy, so we're not going to resist as much. Like, seriously, I really want women to, like, out of the gate, lead with the idea of sleeping in separate beds and having her own bed. So that this is an option because this is most likely going to come up in your relationship. This sleeping crap, this snoring crap especially. And I'm going to end on this note because this deserves a whole nother video. Sleep deprivation. It's a narcissist favorite tactic of manipulation. So I... I want to end with this. I am not saying that men who are snoring are trying to kill you. Although a lot of them actually are. Or just like, whatever. But, and this is why I'm doing a whole nother video on this. Because again, a lot of men are just like, they're just so conditioned to be so selfish and not thoughtful. And this is why if they're not unpacking patriarchy in your relationship, good luck. <laughs> you could never, ever convince me to marry a man who is not actively working on deconstructing this stuff. Sorry, I'm not a teacher. I don't want to teach you anything. I want you to be actively wanting to unlearn this stuff and actively looking for your selfishness in everything you do. The same way, I know it's possible because as a white person, I learn more and more and more every day about how whiteness is centered in literally everything. And so I see it everywhere now. And that, that, that awareness causes me to move differently in the world. And the more I learn, the more it's going to impact my behavior. So I actually know that you could actually realize one day, holy crap, I am an oppressor. How do I not do this? So men who are like, refuse to look at this, bro, I know what that shame is like. I know what that resistance is like. And I don't care. I don't care that you feel bad. You're killing us. You are literally killing us. So if you don't care about deconstructing this stuff, fork off. I don't want to die. But the next video about this, and please comment as much as you can on this if you really liked it because this took a lot of research and time, but it's very important to me. And your comments really, really help these videos get out to my subscribers and help with the algorithm. But the next video is going to be about how men are literally torturing you on purpose with sleep and, um, and how this is a huge red flag. I really, I don't think we understand that this is actually one of the most important part uh impact one of the, the most deadly parts of domestic violence is the way they're doing it through our sleep and for all the women out there who still think that being selfish is bad because that's how we've been raised i want to end on this quote from the brilliant intersectional feminist uh activist thinker like one of the most impactful women of our gener of our generation or not of our generation of our time audrey lord caring for myself is not self-indulgence it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. Yesterday was her birthday, her and Toni Morrison. I'm going to leave you on that note. That's why we do this. Decentering men is not be is about becoming selfishness. It's about literally not dying. You deserve better. Your kids, if you have them, deserve better. Your friends who love you deserve better. Everyone benefits when you stop sacrificing yourself and martyring yourself for men who don't even love you.